Hi guys, Wen here, Vaping Wen, and uh, I'm back today with another video. Um, today I'll be rebuilding the K Fun Light Plus. You know, I've uh, swapped in my K Fun Light. I managed to get a, a nice trade today, and uh, after that, you know, I thought of it as a good opportunity to upgrade from the K Fun Light to the new K Fun Light Plus. Right here. Yeah. So I picked this one up today. Got it at a pretty decent price, below retail. Um, so I'm going to do a quick rebuild, and I'm also going to be pointing out some of the sort of key differences between the light plus and the light. Some of the well, basically there's only one, but uh, anyway, um, I was a bit unlucky in a sense that uh, my unit came with a sort of a broken box at the bottom, and. Uh, you know, I didn't really think of anything much about it until I popped open the box and I found that there was a sort of a nasty scuff. Uh, I don't think you can see it. Yeah, but there is a scuff at the bottom just under the air hole. Um, cosmetic damage, not really a biggie, especially for the price I, um, especially for the price that I managed to pick this up for. So um, anyway, enough from that, I'm going to move the camera down and we are going to do a rebuild. Okay, so we've moved the camera down to my workstation and uh, straight away you'll be able to see a couple of things down here. Um, out of the box, the K-Fun Light Plus comes with the uh, M-Tank section. This is not the full M-Tank, but it's just uh, one of the sections that will give you a uh, sort of transparent window into the tank. Uh, I use it on occasion you know when I go M tank I prefer to go the full M tank but uh, today we'll just be using the stainless steel section right um, another thing interesting you will see here is this copper post I actually picked this up a couple of days ago and I used it on um, my previous K fun light that really does give it a very consistent firing in terms of voltage drop I'm pretty sure it does help but you know I don't want to give you numbers which I can't properly verify uh, an interesting tidbit I did initially use the copper post with my copper mod on a micro coil build <laughs> with cotton uh, I popped in a fresh battery gave it a pulse and straight away my cotton burnt up so you know it really is very powerful but uh, you know I got the bliss for the copper mod so I'm guessing that I'll be running the K Fun Light a lot on the PEPS. Okay, so um, we'll just put this pin here. We will be putting that into the K Fun Light Plus very soon. And I will just clear this up a bit. Yes, today we'll be doing micro coils. I already made a micro coil here. It's not completely pressed together to eliminate the hot spots, but we'll do that in a bit. I'm going to be using cotton, of course. Um, okay, I already gave this a wash, so let's just tear this down a bit. And uh, since you know I'm holding this part, I just want to turn this around and show you the probably the only difference between the K Fun Light and the K Fun Light Plus. Um, on the K Fun Light, there was this was not here. This valve was not here. And basically, what this valve is is a uh, it's a grub screw, which oops, which uh, sort of blocks this channel. So the deeper it, you screw it in, the more it closes off, and uh, that results in a tighter draw. The bigger you leave it out, or the further you leave it out, you know it goes further back, and that gives you a looser draw. And uh, that's one thing. The second thing is you notice the fuel fuel screw is recessed instead of being flush and when you take this out there should be a little o-ring at the back of the screw yep there you go there's a little o-ring on the screw and quite honestly that's the only difference between the k fun light and the k fun light plus the k fun light occasionally had liquid seeping out uh, you know not a massive amount a drop or two so that usually seep out here and end up on your um, top cap uh, you know give it a wipe a day and that's fine but hopefully with this additional um, o-ring here it should stop any and all leaks so I'm just going to 
take this off the chimney don't worry I already gave this a good wash beforehand and um, the first thing I'm gonna do is swap out the 510 pole uh, very easy just get a big screwdriver and turn okay so when this 510 pole comes out the positive connection here will get very loose and will also come off so you want to be very careful not to lose any of this you know, this is also the way you would change the insulator if uh, you know you run it at too low ohms and the insulator burns out so you want to uh, you know you open it this way and you get access to the insulator here for now we'll just put this back on okay we'll just thread the copper pole through first oh boy I got insulators falling out all over the place now you know you might think that oh, it's just a small piece of plastic you know it's not that important but mind you insulators are very very important because they block the flow of electricity from the positive post to the base of the actual uh, atomizer and uh, this actually stops any shorting that happens you know if you're using a uh, variable voltage variable wattage mod then you don't really have to be that worried about shorting because you know those mods have short circuit protection but when you're using a mechanical mod like I am you know um, a shot could easily kill your spring it could kill your battery and uh, neither of those are pleasant things to happen uh, when you're working with copper you know I find that it's very uh, important that you use the proper tools proper in a sense like here you know I'm using a very big screwdriver you know it's much bigger than the screwdrivers I usually use and that's because copper itself is a very soft metal and when it's so soft and using a very small screwdriver you know you could easily sort of uh, damage the groove there and you know that's never nice oh I just noticed something different about the KFUN Lite Plus um, something very similar to the KFUN 3.1 you have a hole here underneath the positive post where you can insert your kanthal but uh, it's funny because I don't see another hole on the uh, negative post on the 3.1 there is a hole here and there's a hole here and that makes you uh, you know that lets you use flat wire to call your your your, your wicks um, to make your calls and you'll be surprised how well flat wire works on silica mm, it's a bit odd that there's only one hole here I'll do a Google search later and see if I'm the only one having this maybe this is a manufacturing defect maybe this is apart from the KFUN 3.1 yeah, who knows but yep I've got the copper pole in now it's in here and you can see it peeking up from here so I'm just going to uh, screw this onto a base so it's easier to work with okay let's put this here and we'll loosen the terminals now I'm not going to be using the bottom hole to hold my kantal since uh, you know I didn't even know it's going to be there so I'm just going to call it the somewhat traditional way I've pre-made my micro coil today and uh, instead of using 26 AWG like I did yesterday I am using 28 AWG and this is vapor wire also 10 loops and uh, the purpose of using 28 over 26 is because I don't want the ohms to be too low this time now, yesterday I got uh, I set up my fogger and it was reading what 0 0.8 you know a bit too low especially when I'm using a pure copper center post it might lead to um, the sort of cotton burning too quickly again I apologize if you know I'm working out of the camera so let's just do a quick ohm check 1.8 ohm 1.8 ohm um, of course I haven't tightened up the call yet so let's do that but before that let's just trim off the excess
Oops. Okay, let's trim off the excess. Put this onto the peps. Interesting tidbit, you know, if you are interested in getting a uh, GP peps, then uh, Vapor Art is actually having their Vapor Day. I believe they have the peps 2.5 Lux on sale as well as the 2.5 stainless steel on sale oh boy okay look at that it's hot spotting but that's expected since we have not sort of uh, pressed the coil together yet so again you know like what we did on the fogger a pulse press hold let go pulse again look for the uh, glow from inside to out press and hold you know make sure you don't uh, don't mess up the coiling while you're holding it pulse let go and yeah you know it's glowing pretty nicely now from the inside out and then outside in when you let go just a few more tweaks and this will be good to go actually it's pretty good to go okay so the coil looks pretty nice and tight I'm not sure if you can see it here but yeah looks quite decent and uh, I'm just gonna do another quick ohm check it was 1.08 uh, before I adjusted the coil so let's see if that has changed I'm really hoping it doesn't go below 1 ohm you know, ideally I'm looking for 1.3 but fingers crossed let's see 1.15 1.15 not too bad not too bad see the subtle change in uh, sort of resistance you know when it was uh, a loose coil and when it's tight coil I don't know the exact science of it Sounds like I don't know a lot of things, right? <laughs> but uh, okay, we're gonna use some cotton. Tear off a bit here, put this aside. Roll up one end, make it easier to thread through, and put it in. Now, if you're wondering, the uh, diameter of the micro coil is actually 1.5 mm. I am very sure of that today because I used a 1.5 mm drill bit instead of um, instead of just using the precision screwdriver. Mm, that's a bit tight. Let's uh, tear off a bit here. Okay. Now that's the thing when you work at cotton. When you think that you have enough, always tear off a bit because you have too much. let's try that again pull pull I uh, like pull ah, happy days we're good okay so we're good here oh boy no worries just pull this back and there you go we've got the coil uh, we've got the wick set up now just to trim it a bit put it up now we're just gonna put on the ch the chimney and the way I like to sort of trim my wick is just to push these ends together put this chimney down and screw it on you know, and just sort of trim the wick about here just on top of the chimney okay now that's trimmed like that just gonna take a sharp implement and just gently push this down now I need to get some juice some e-liquid ah I left it outside I'll be right back Okay, so now we've got the core set up. I'm just going to drip a bit of e-liquid. Today I'm vaping Hanuman, my all-time favorite banana-flavored e-liquid. I had no idea that I had so little left. 
now I'm a bit upset but uh, let's just get on with it you know just wet the cotton a bit first just to see how it fires you know it's never pleasant to fire a dry cotton because you just end up with it burnt I've wet that a bit now uh, maybe I just wet it a bit more okay give this an unlock and there you go the call is working very well now that was metering at 1.15 I think yep so that's a uh, very good sort of homage I was gunning for 1.3 but you know you can't always get what you want that was a uh, 10 loops of 28 AWG Cantal uh, over a 1.5 mm diameter I'm surprised that uh, my homage is so low this time uh, so let's just fill this up I believe that the capacity for the k Light Plus is 4ml and I have maybe only 2ml of e-liquid here today but what the heck right now filling it this way you know almost guarantees that you don't get leaks you know, sometimes you do when you overfill you know, that tends to happen but uh, if you get leakage or rather flooding on your k fun or k fun light or k fun light plus then you know it's a very easy solution to uh, fix it you know all you have to do is start sucking from the air hole and that will clear out the excess liquid in the chamber now we put this on the mod pop on the drip tip actually let's pop on something different I've got a uh, hellfire drip tip mm -hmm. looks alright oh you know ah I'll go with this uh, custom you know reduced chamber uh, kfan style drip tip which is about half the length of the original drip tip and uh, I'll move the camera back up and we'll have a vape okay I'm back and um, during the short time that it took for me to bring the camera from down to up I have been questioning myself and uh, wondering if um, the increase in price from the KFUN Light Plus uh, from the KFUN Light to the Light Plus you know uh, that's 40 ringgit difference about 10 US dollars difference uh, and I was just wondering if that change is that increase is justified by um, the addition of the crop screw to the air channel and you know the addition of o-ring uh, my gut tells me no because um, the leaking problem okay let's let's just talk about that first the leaking problem on the light wasn't a big problem uh, if you have access to plumbing tape you know the white tape one small wrap around the uh, around the screw you know literally eliminates any leaking anyway uh, it's not like the leaking was a big problem in the first place it wasn't causing a drop in pressure it wasn't causing uh, a significant leakage of e-liquid you know uh, every day you just take off your atty give it a wipe and you know you want two drops to leak out no big deal mm, should the o-ring have been there in the first place yes uh, but additional 40 ringgit for the upgrade no um, as for the airflow control which is actually just uh, an additional grub screw put into the airflow channel I honestly think that's quite silly because um, at the default setting at the widest setting you're just getting the same airflow as you would on the KFUN light that's because this uh, airflow channel hasn't changed it's the same size um, I don't know I don't want to start renting but 
I just think it's quite silly, you know, they're just attempting to stay current, uh, you know, trying to do what the cloners are doing, you know. The k fun like clones in Malaysia, they come with adjustable airflow in a similar fashion to how this one does. Uh, some are even taking it a step further and putting the airflow control uh, next to the airflow itself, you know, sort of like what the Russian 91% does. So again, you know, is it justified? In my opinion, no, uh, it sounds, or rather it looks like what something Apple would do, you know, they introduce cut and paste into an old iPhone and call it a new iPhone. But, you know, who are we to complain, you know? Uh, stocks of the old k Fun Lite are almost gone already. Even if you find a new box now, it's going to be a very old batch. Personally, if you can find a, um, I mean, if you're not going to tinker with the airflow, look for a look for a k fun light you know um, i got the k fun light plus at a very good price i got it cheaper than what i paid for my k fun light so you know i honestly shouldn't be complaining but if i paid retail for it you know 440 versus 400 then i would be pretty unhappy there's also an odd whistling sound I don't know if you can hear that camera but it's very audible to me here and um, you know the the, ans the reason is pretty simple you put something to obstruct an airflow uh, it could be as small as a ding or a, you know a burr from machining and you know they're putting a grub screw here and that's obstructing the airflow so definitely there's going to be whistling so if you always take a uh, strong hits long drags and strong drags then the uh, whistling will be very audible to you for me you know uh, i have a bit weaker lungs i take normal <laughs> normal strength drags so it just does pop up once in a while as for the build itself you know there's no gurgling so that means that i didn't use too much cotton or too little cotton um, for k fun builds, you know, if you use too much cotton, you get flooding. You use too little cotton, you get flooding. Uh, same goes with silica and eco wool. Um, as for dry hits, I've never really experienced a dry hit on a k fun. <coughs> uh, what else? What else? Um, if you're building a, a coil yourself, try not to put your ohms too low. You might fry out the insulators. You know, it's never pleasant when you have a burnt insulator. You have to change it. That's the first thing. You know, you get shorts. You might damage your mod. <coughs> and then, you know, you have to spend more money to buy a new spring and buy a new insulator. So, it's very annoying. Um, well, like what my t-shirt says, same, same. I honestly feel that the improvements on the light aren't that significant. <coughs> oh, I think the... Uh, K fun gods do not agree with me and they're smiting me right now for saying that but uh, enough uh, nonsense from me i hope the um, build tutorial was helpful uh, of course that's not the only way to build a K-Fun uh, people like uh, rip tripper you know he has crazy uh, chimney builds for his K-Fun people like todd might go for more conventional wraps four wraps five wraps uh, for me personally, I really love using micro calls with cotton and uh, so this is how I build my KFAT on a day-to-day -day basis. I change my cotton uh, almost daily but that's usually because I go through quite a lot of e-liquid in a day. I go through at least one and a half tanks. So um, if I don't change my cotton today, I do it tomorrow. Uh, then that ensures that the middle part of the cotton doesn't completely burn out or fraser out and that goes the same for um, the fogger you know or any micro call build unless you're on mesh uh, micro calls on mesh are a completely different story but uh, enough about that enough ranting one last bit and I'm gonna call it a night wishing everybody a uh, wonderful week ahead and keep vaping guys